Hello, my name is Andre Stefan, and together with Fabian, your present, uh, we're happy to bring to you the Epic Grasshopper plugin. This is a tutorial of that plugin that enables you to quantify lifecycle embodied environmental flows of built assets using the Rhino Grasshopper environment. Uh, we're going to talk about the different components and uh, walk you through how to use it to your advantage so that you can quantify these important environmental metrics. I'll pass it to Fabian to take it from there. Hi. Um, hi, my name is Fabian Prudeau um, and I'll be taking you through a quick tutorial uh, of of the plugin. Um, the first thing we'll look at is to make sure that it's installed on your computer. So if you've installed the Epic plugin, you should have this tab up the top here that says Epic. Um, and this tutorial will take you through each of the different components and quickly explain what they do. So the first thing I'm going to explain is the materials here. So the Epic material is the first item there. Um, I'll, I'll explain all of the inputs on, on here and then do a quick demonstration of how we can arrive at the analysis component. Um, so uh, to start off, um, the first thing you need to do is activate the component. So to do that, you just need to take a button and plug it into the first input click the button and then that will bring up a list of categories of different materials and materials that you can select from that. So I'm just going to quickly select uh, glass here and then we'll, we'll work, the first material that we'll work with is just a simple um, double glazing flat, flat glass. So in terms of activating the material element, that's that's all of the um, inputs that you need to provide. Um, however, there are uh, some other inputs that you can provide into it. So I'll quick, quickly run you through those as well. So the comments section here, um, you can put in a comment and that will flow all the way through to the reports. Um, the wastage coefficient essentially gives you, um, you can specify how much of that material uh, is wasted essentially. So you can give that as a percentage um, if you hover over each of these items, it gives you an explanation. So for the wastage, it's a percentage for the material. 100% um, indicates that there's 100% wastage. So what we'll do here is we'll just put 3% wastage for this, for this glass on here. So to do that, you just simply plug that in. Um, and then we'll also um, define a material service life for it. So that is how long the material will actually last, the service life of that material. So we'll plug in 40 years for that glass element. Um, so we've got that all plugged in now. Um, there are some reduction factors that you can put in there as well. Um, and that essentially reduces each of the different flows by a percentage. Um, and if you would like more information, uh, you can put a toggle switch and it will open up the Epic database for you. Um, within the material outputs themselves, um, just by plugging in those quick components, you can quickly see uh, the embodied energy coefficient, the water coefficient, and the, um, the, <laughs> the greenhouse gas emissions coefficient for that. Um, there are some other elements on there. Um, the DOI is a place where you can essentially get more information about this specific material. So if you, if we just get a panel here, um, I can quickly go over each of these. Um, so if you enter that link into your website, then you'll be able to find out more information about double glazed flat glass. Um, then we, we've got the default density for that material. Um, all of these values are taken from the EPIC database um, and any that have been overridden over here will flow through into that material as well. So one thing that's really important is the functional unit of that material and that's going to become clearer when we develop the assembly in the next stage. Um, so the waste wastage component you can see um, here is showing three um, and as you, you can change that and it will you can see that it 
it automatically changes that. So the default for glass, there isn't actually a wastage um, component uh, coefficient that's entered there. Um, so if we delete that, then it will show null. Um, so some, some materials in the EPIC database will have a default wastage coefficient and they will have a service life coefficient automatically built into them. Um, the, next, the next thing is the service life, which we've already put in there. Um, and then lastly is just the disclaimer, which, which is some information about the material. Um, one really important thing about all of the, the components is that you can actually plug in that first input, sorry, output, and get uh, some detailed information about the, either the material that you're looking at or the assembly or the analysis component that you're looking at. So that's the material. Um, so let's go ahead and make uh, an assembly. So I'm going to choose a surface assembly. Um, and for that, essentially, we need to um, select a surface. Uh, there are all also volumetric assemblies that you can do. Um, you can select a, a linear one or you can do particular units so it actually counts the number of units and that depends on the geometry that you're using. But for this we're just going to be using flat geometry and it will do a simple area calculation um, based on that flat surface that, that we're inputting. Um, so we'll go ahead and make a quick surface from the glass. So all we need to do to that um, is we just take the output of the EPIC material um, and we're going to put that in uh, the first material here for the, for the assembly. Now this assembly is not going to be particularly complicated because it's, it's literally just going to include the glass. Um, I won't put in any of the frame or anything in this, but essentially if you did have a frame, you would put that in that material too, and then you would have a quantity for that. Um, so the next part, the quantity is really important. Um, and that's essentially, uh, you need to know the functional unit of the material. Um, the functional unit is also shown over on the input here. You can see um, meter squared. Uh, and that functional unit is important to, to remember because um, you essentially, you need to tell, say, how many um, functional units per meters squared um, there are. So for this one, it's very easy um, because the functional unit is already in meters squared. So there is going to be one meter square for every meter squared that there are. Um, however, if it, was, if it was in kilograms, for instance, um, then you would has to have to specify how many kilograms per um, meter square of this specific assembly. So that's where the, the calculations that you need, might need to spend a bit of time going through and actually working out the correct um, functional unit um, and units that go into that. So the only... Uh, other thing that you need to input into this is some geometry. So we've already set up a model in Rhino that already has some, uh, that has a building in there. So we'll go ahead and we'll just select, we'll just select one, uh, we'll select some multiple windows from there. Um, so you can see we've got a house here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click both of those windows. So now the geometry is within here. Um, and then all that we need to do is we need to drag that geometry to the selected services. And then that, that is all the inputs that you need as a basic element to activate that assembly. Um, so if we drag this um, panel over here, uh, you can now see details for that assembly, which is essentially uh, just this one glass pane that we've created um, and there's three square meters, um, two lots of three, so each window is, is three square meters. Okay, so that's a basic assembly. As I said, there's multiple different assemblies in there. Um, if you, you can also access the, the original geometry as part of that, so you can, you can take another geometry element and have a look at that. Um, each of the, the other assemblies and the, um, okay. 
So each, each of the other analysis components and assemblies, uh, you can also access the geometry for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and analyze this now. So to do that, all we need to do is drag this epic analysis onto, onto the board. Um, and we'll just drag, so you can, you can essentially, you can compare um, different assemblies and also built, built assets, which we'll explore a little bit later in the tutorial. But for now, we essentially have this assembly dragged into there and at, at its very basic level, um, that will now do the analysis for that. So if we go into Rhino, um, Let's let's do that so that we can see here. Okay, so you can see now um, we have the Epic Assembly here, and it's just showing a very basic output of of the energy, the water, and the greenhouse gas emissions um, for just just those two windows here. Um, there are some other basic things that you should always be doing as, as a matter of principle that um, naming naming each of them. So, so here we're doing the windows. So we'll set the assembly category as, as a window. Um, we'll explain the categories a little bit later, but that essentially allows you to compare multiple categories with each other. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and set the name as the same thing. So we've got the window and then we'll have the assembly category as window as well. Now you can see here with this analysis component um, that we've got wastage and we've got initial. We've got initial wastage and initial. Um, now we need to, if, if we want to do the analysis over a period of years, we need to actually put in um, a number of years here. So if by in default, it, the analysis will have a zero years, which means there's no, um, the service life doesn't come into it. So if we want to put, for example, we just put a hundred years that we want to do this analysis over um, and we plug that in, you can see immediately that we now have these recurrent wastage and recurrent values here. Now that's coming directly from the service life that we put in here, which is 40 years. So there's going to be two replacements within that 100 year period. Um, so I think, I think we can probably um, pass over to Andre now, who's going to do the second part, the more advanced tutorial, and we'll explain some of the further features. Thanks, Fabian, uh, for that. All right, so um, what we're going to do from here to demonstrate a little bit how you can take the EPIC database to the next level is to create uh, a bit more complex assemblies. And so to do that, I'm going to drag another EPIC assembly, surface assembly over here. And we're going to say that this will be a structural insulated panel that is painted. So to do so, I need to go into the EPIC database to basically fetch what I need. So uh, Fabian demonstrated that you can use a button to uh, activate that component, but you can also use the toggle switch. Both can work uh, seamlessly. So let's go into the timber products and select a SIP panel that is 162 millimeters in thickness. And uh, we're going to put that into the uh, assembly and we're going to specify that it's one square meter per square meter exactly like what Fabian specified because this is in square meters. So that's done. We need to paint that SIP panel. We're going to keep it simple so you can quickly search for EPIC components. These will come up as well in the search bar. We will again connect a button this time. Up to you, whatever preference you have. And we're going to select a paint from here. So uh, this uh, comes into the miscellaneous products and there is water-based paint per square meter. You can also use per kilogram and then see how much kilograms of paint you have per square meter, but that's uh, up to you if you want to do multiple layers. So let's keep it simple, one square meter of paint per square meter of assembly. 
I'm gonna keep that same quantity here for both materials. And I need to now select the walls of uh, my uh, particular uh, geometry that I wanna select. So set one geometry, I go back into the Rhino model and I'm gonna select that wall around the particular windows. So the selected surfaces is wired in. Let's follow the best practice that uh, Fabian mentioned, so we're going to put wall as an assembly category. If you want to be better, uh, more specific, it's better to put outer wall. And you can also give it a name. So in this case, we're going to put uh, SIPs or painted SIP 162 mils. All right, now we do have this EPIC assembly defined. That's it, quite easy if you know what you're looking for. And what we want to do now is introduce a new component, which is the EPIC built asset. We want to say, well, this built asset is a wall over here. So I drag and drop built asset, the asset name, well, I'm going to say whatever, Northern Wall. Well, you can put the whole building if you want. Uh, you can define an asset in whatever combination of assemblies that you like. Uh, and then the EPIC assemblies that come in, so that's the wall and you just hold shift and add the windows. And now we have, uh, if we check the geometry that is connected to that asset, well, this, this shows both the windows and the wall. So that's good. And then we're gonna wire the Epic built asset instead of the assembly into here. And we click, quickly see that, well, this has increased dramatically because we have added the SIPs panels. Um, what is also interesting to see now is the fact that you can break down this graph into a range of different indicators. So to do so, you need to, again, activate that particular feature. You connect the button, you click on it, and then you get a drop-down list. So for now, it's just showing the total embodied energy, water, and greenhouse gas emissions. We can break this down by material. We see that the SIP panel represents significant, uh, the most significant share, and that's just the initial. We are assuming that we're not replacing it over 100 years, followed by the double glazing and the paint. If you do it by assembly, we see, well, that the wall represents a much more significant share than the window uh, at, the, at the whole level, at the total level. And you can also break it down by assembly and material. So you start saying that, okay, within the outer wall, this is the contribution of the paint and of the SIP panel. Within the window, this is the contribution of the flat glass. You can easily see that once you have much more complex assemblies into play, this is extremely powerful in terms of how the output comes out. On the right-hand side, you have access to each uh, quantified indicator directly, and this follows the actual breakdown of the output. So, if uh, I connect a panel on this end, you have, as usual, the top one, which is the entire report. In this case, it's going to be <laughs> quite long. It contains uh, all the different indicators that you have as outputs on top of some other things, including the number of materials, the, the, the type of materials in the panel. Uh, you can scroll down and explore that. You have, you have even the quantities of assemblies within that particular analysis. Now, um, what I wanted to show is this. So you can have, if you connect the graph outputs, uh, you have uh, the, the different geometries that, uh, that come out, but also the names of the, of the materials. And this graph output uh, enables you to break down the whole graph into each composing lines and legends and numbers, etc. So it's quite advanced and it's probably not something that you want to explore in depth unless you're a developer or you want to do something with the graph. What you're interested in is the output breakdown. And the output breakdown is really useful because it tells you the sequence in which the results are reported. So when you do breakdown by assembly and material, we know that we are going to break down the outer wall into SIPs. So this is the first material that is going to come up every time. So when I get now another panel that I'm going to put just under this one, and I wire my initial embodied energy into it, this value, 83,000, corresponds to the SIP panel the, within the outer wall. This zero value corresponds to the SIP panel into the window. 
So what this is basically doing is it's that it's cross-referencing all materials across all assemblies and displaying their values here. This is why you get zeros. We decided to go down that path of systematic reporting so that you can slice the data in whatever way you want in quite a powerful manner. I'm going to leave it at here, uh, here for that particular uh, output of the analysis. And I'd like to introduce uh, one last feature because before we check the, the CSV reporting model. So one of the last things in terms of inputs that you can use is the custom material. So while the EPIC database is quite detailed in terms of the number of materials, it has good coverage, we felt that it was important to enable you to actually define your own materials, typically for things that do not exist in the EPIC database. In this particular case, uh, I want to model basically the same SIP panel using just the process data that we have for it. Uh, so I'm going to call, call it process-based SIPs, SIP panel 162 mil. Uh, and then the, I'm going to put the category, leave it as it is. I mean, we can put timber as well over here. Uh, now, the functional unit is something that you need to define here. So I'm going to enter square meters. You can enter the two not superscript and the code will parse it for you. So you don't need to worry about it too much this way. And then you obviously need to input your uh, embodied energy coefficient, water and greenhouse gas emissions that you will typically have collected from EPDs or the lab. So in this particular case, we know that the embodied energy using the process data is 2,505 gigajoules. We know that the embodied water is 4,272 liters of water per square meter. And we know that we need 133 kilograms of CO2 equivalent for the embodied emissions. Once we've done this, the custom material is now activated. We can quickly check what comes out of the panel on the send when we connect it to custom material. And it looks uh, very, well, very much like a typical material. We have the names, the categories that we've entered, the functional unit, and the different coefficients. If you enter a density, uh, it will plot here, etc. So it, uh, it's similar into how it operates. You can also input a wastage coefficient and a material service life uh, into that. So what I'd like to model is basically the same uh, assembly as here, but I want to replace the, uh, the SIPs panel with the custom one that I have created. And I will leave the rest exactly as it is. No change in that. Uh, to be able to compare these two, I will uh, rewire this EPIC assembly to a new analysis and just add the glazing. And then I want to compare that with what exists already. So I've put it here. When we do this, we can see the significant reduction up to 30% in the embodied energy, water, and greenhouse gas emissions associated with the SIP panel when using pure process data. And if we now look at the total, um, uh, we can see this reduction over here for the whole wall. Uh, and this is quickly to demonstrate also the power of the EPIC database in terms of its comprehensiveness over process-based data, because it covers also non-material inputs and it's uh, complete in terms of system boundaries. Uh, so you can use these custom materials to enrich the EPIC database, but be careful because uh, these might be missing uh, some, you know, inputs that the EPIC database would be taking into account. So you're basically mixing apples and oranges, and oranges potentially, and um, it varies a lot by material. So for concrete steel, the difference won't be much between process and hybrid, but if you want to do things like ETFE, uh, Process-based data represents around 1%. Timber also is not very well represented uh, in terms of process data. So keep that in mind when defining custom materials. The last thing that I really want to talk about, uh, just quickly, so for the graph, you can actually modify where it starts. You can scale it up. But most importantly, you can export the results of this analysis to a CSV file to take your analysis to the next level on your preferred, you know, the table software such as Excel or OpenOffice or Google Sheets. So uh, I'm going to add um, a file path a component over here uh, to specify the folder location. So I right click on it, select a directory. I'm just going to put it on the desktop for now. And then you can 
connect the button, I think you get the idea about how many of these features work. You press that button here, and this takes us directly, uh, you see that successfully printed to CSV file, and it put in the directory. So if I go back to my desktop, and I double click on it and open it, you have a, you know, a header that describes what's happening, the period of analysis, the total breakdown of the you know, life cycle total by energy, water, and greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, for each assembly, you have actually the material within it, it's, um, uh, its category. And then the, for each material, you have the quantity and the inputs in terms of embodied energy, water, and greenhouse gas emissions. So you can explore these reports to get a much more detailed understanding of how that works. And you also have a reporting at the end of the bill of quantities of assemblies within that particular, uh, uh, you know, build asset analysis, uh, and that's broken down by material. So you have all the, the quantities of materials across all built assets selected. This is why this seems, uh, you know, quite high in total. All right. The last thing that we probably want to show you, and that's uh, that's a promise, is the Epic Help. So. In case uh, you're, uh, you want to open the EPIC database itself because you want to check something up quickly, you can uh, wire a Boolean toggle here and turn it on. And that would open up your browser and load the EPIC database web page where you can find a lot of resources about EPIC. And we're updating that website. So there is a new section on the EPIC Grasshopper coming up soon. You can also uh, quickly open the uh, either one of these two, but typically if you want to suggest a feature that you'd like to see implemented in Epic Grasshopper, please uh, be our guest, come in here, suggest a feature, and then tell us a little bit more about uh, what this is related for and what you'd like to see. And similarly, if you want to report a bug, and we urge you to do so because we want to make sure that things are correct and that uh, you are getting the best value out of this plugin. You can also follow the prompts on that form to inform us of what to correct in the future version. All right, so if we zoom out, the workflow is relatively simple. You just need to select particular materials, combine them into assemblies, and then you can combine these assemblies into built assets before inputting them into analysis or directly analyzing the assemblies themselves and uh, comparing the results graphically using the stacked bar charts that are gener automatically generated, or using the reports that come out, or also using the direct uh, quantified outputs that you can you know, parse or optimize within Grasshopper itself parametric. We hope that this tutorial uh, has been informative, and uh, we're looking forward to your feedback in the comments section below. Thank you. Thank you.